So this is my ProStar 230 by ProClear um, in black, as you can see, and it's a peninsula. The main reason why I'm doing this video is because I want to give uh, some people the opportunity to see kind of what this tank's like that are interested in peninsula because whenever I was looking to purchase this tank, uh, there wasn't a lot of information out there or videos, especially for the peninsula. I was looking at Waterbox and Red Sea, like probably many of the people watching this video are. Um, I recently moved uh, all the live rock and fish and coral that's alive in this tank from a Red Sea 250. So this 65, 64 gallon system. Uh, I had it in the other house, recently moved here uh, a couple weeks ago. And during the move, I transferred all of that tank inhabitants into this tank. Um, so it's been up and running for about a week and a half, coming up on two weeks. Everything's doing great. I did a rapid cycle with, uh, for its turbo start 900 and uh, some of my live rock, and then I moved my live rock and fish and coral into the tank uh, and put new sand in and a, you know, did a cup full of sand. If you have questions about this kind of transition, I learned a lot from it versus setting up a new tank, uh, feel free to ask and I'll tell you what I did and go into more detail. So getting back to the tank, um, it's a 230 gallon total system. I believe it's a 190 display and 30 gallons, sorry, 40 gallons in the sump, but puts it at a 230 gallon system. It's 72 inches long by 26 inches wide. Uh, something that's different than the Red Sea or the water box. I haven't seen a water box up close, but is the finish on this base or stand is gloss. It's a high gloss. I'm trying to pick it up, see, you can see the reflection in it. I actually like it, it looks good. I haven't had any issues out of it. I think it's a, it's a nice stand. Uh, I'll open it up here in a second, you'll see. Uh, the one thing you're gonna notice is on the stand for the peninsula, it has this door. This can pop out if you wanna use it. There's one on the opposite end that I used to run in uh, power. I used to run in my lights and my uh, MP40 on this side goes up and around. I put an extension cable on it and, and then I run MP40 right here. It comes down and it drops in. I also have uh, three water lines and a Cat6 cable that I routed from my basement up. The water lines being used for, uh, currently one's just being used for my auto top off and the uh, other two are going to be used for automatic water changes in the future. So I haven't had a chance to super organize this thing. It's a rat's nest of cables. I had to get the tank up and running in a pretty quick uh, turnaround because we're trying to get out of the house and do a 30 minute trip to move the fish, etc. So I didn't have time to really set this tank up because like many of you, I've had to wait for a while for it to come in because of COVID apparently. So getting on the inside here on the base. Um, I already put some LEDs up so I can see what I'm doing. So again, you have this door right here. This wall, this back wall, and the far right one are three quarter inch plywood and it has a metal frame that runs around internally, as you can see, through parts of it. It's not a completely metal frame where you would have a vertical bar going down. But as you can see, it has metal frame pieces, which is different than what my Red Sea is. Um, the other thing you'll notice down here, if you look at some pictures, you might pick up on it, is there is a finished port with a bulkhead, or not bulkhead, but a gusset around here that you could run piping and water or electric up through the floor if you wanted to. And the only other access point I'll get to it is down there, as you can see where the overflow uh, pipes come in right to here on the ball valves. So I all, all my system is stock other than what you're seeing pretty much in this area here, which is I added my old water, uh, ATO sump from my tank. It's a five gallon, it's actually made by ProClear. Um, I used it because the one that comes with it is only a three gallon from my understanding. And I run a Tunzi auto top off system, which I really like, I've had it for years. <clears throat> and as you see, I have my dosers, which is Kimura. Uh, three different dosers, and then I have a GHL ProFlex 4 that I've had on the other tank for about a year. I love it. it does a great job. And then I run a bunch of Echotech because I like their pumps and I like their lights. Uh, and then I have a max spec controller for my uh, protein skimmer, which eventually I'm going to reorganize this and probably build a shelf, set up my dosing pumps, etc., and really clean all this wire up. It's it's nuts and it sucks, but it is what it is for right now. So moving down, you have three doors. You have the door for, I guess you'd say, your electronics and whatever else you're gonna to add to the tank system. The middle door, which are suicide doors with a post in the middle. And so here's your sump. It's a glass sump. Uh, it comes in 
You go from left to right, you have your, your overflows that come in. They come with two ball valves that are what quarter turn uh, to totally off and on. I quarter turned them based on the pump that I'm using, which is a Vectra M1. It's an actual older Vectra when they first came out. I really like the pump, it does well. I'm running about 75% power. Uh, if I went to 100%, I just don't think the tank could keep up with it. It seems like it was, it was just too much noise. So it's a pretty quiet system. We have it tuned in right now. It has six filter socks. As you see, got cables and stuff everywhere that are in there. The only thing I don't like about this is, is they are uh, shorter than your average sock that you can find in your local fish tank store or online. So I have to kind of figure that out or go through somebody that's pro clear that carries those socks. But they're four inch socks, there's six of them. You could run a bigger, a longer sock, it's just gonna tip over. It is what it is. Um, but you have these polycarbonate acrylic thin covers. There's actually another set right here that go around the um, skimmer. Right now I have them up as you can tell because my lines, I need to get new one for my doser. They're too short and they run through here. And my ATO line is still short from my old system. I need to buy a new one of these this weekend uh, to move it further down to my return. But right now it just goes down and shoots into you'd say the refugium area. So you have a baffle, it goes down, comes through underneath, and it comes over, drops into the refugium, where I have my media in here, and then it actually has a plastic grating system under there to where the water flows through that. Thought that was pretty nice, and then goes into your return area. Um, I have my Tunesy set up in here in the return pump area, and it gives you a little line for lowest water level, highest water level, and that's what I try to keep it at while the system's running. I don't want to go above this uh, line right here because you have potential of overflow in the sump if the pump's shut off. And then I have a just a basic uh, automatic feeder for my pellets. One time a day that drops into a magnetic ring that keeps the pellets right there that then lets the pump suck them in and put them out through the display tank. Um, let's get into the plumbing a little bit. Something that I like that they did in the Red Sea is the way their brackets are made. This uses a zip tie system. They're removable. They're not permanent. You can unlock them right here and they come off. But your return pipe comes, or yes, your return pipe comes down. It has a connection right here. And then same thing with your overflows. They're a little bit bigger. I think they're three quarter inch or actually one inch pipe. You go down and just drop down inside. You can look in there, you see a little bit of micro bubbles. Um, and again, it's held up right here. And then they've got another link in the back. You could probably run these cables. I'd had a chance to organize again, so it's a mess. As you can see, I have my uh, probes. All their cables are hanging out. I've got to reroute all this stuff eventually and clean it up and get an idea how I want to do it to make it neater. Um, the one good thing that I noticed about this tank moving it is on my Red Sea, my bulkheads stick down. I have to be real careful moving it because I don't want to crack the area around the bulkheads. This, they set high enough up, plus the edge of the tank. It actually has a rimmed bottom that I didn't really notice until I saw somebody else's video. But it, it has a stand, and then the bottom actually has a rim. Unlike the Red Seas, it's just a solid piece of glass. Uh, some people like it, some people don't. What I do like about it is if you have some saltwater splash over fish make... Uh, a splash or you drip because you're reaching there to do something instead of it running all the way down the face of your tank and leaving black or sorry salt stains that you honestly have to clean up it instead most of the time will catch right along here now you have to clean that out with a paper towel or whatever you want to do but it does catch a little bit it's kind of stops some of that mess from occurring so much down the face especially if a black stand anyone's had one the downside of the black stand is it so shows the salt uh stains the dried salt if anything runs down the front of it um, I personally like the black tank. I think it's great, but some people love the white for that reason. Uh, the other thing I would tell you is if you get a chance, you're looking at the white, is check out right here along the edges because the doors actually are a metal frame door and then it has a thin, you know, finish, a piece of acrylic or polycarbonate plastic, which is nice. But the downside is if you have white, this shows up still is black and then a white panel. I don't believe they painted these doors white. The, the frame of the door is white. So this doesn't really matter too much once it's closed. But where you're gonna notice it at is going to be right here. 
So as you're approaching, for instance, for me on a peninsula, as I'm coming through into my living room, uh, dining area or living room, kitchen area, there'll be a white line where it connects. Uh, the black doesn't do that, but I believe the white does. So it's something to think about or take a look at <clears throat> if you're kind of split between the two. Uh, the other thing I've noticed that is kind of, I'm indifferent about, I guess, or not really a fan of, but it doesn't make that much difference to me, is your overflow box is all one piece of acrylic. It doesn't have the pop out uh, gates or what you want to call it for where the water flows through to clean them. Not that I ever did my Red Sea. Honestly, I never did. I just left them in and just cleaned them as is with a toothbrush. It comes with this thin piece of acrylic instead of the Red Sea that has like the pre cut out mount. So I have to manually cut this out to fit around my light bracket. Um, I understand why a lot of people like to hang their lights so they don't bother having this cut out on here, but it is what it is. You have the two overflows, and actually both of the overflows come with two silencers that fit on top here, but mine won't fit because of my light mount. So I have, they have two of these. I took them off. I don't need them. And as you can hear, it's not a very loud system at all. Um, it's actually a pretty quiet system. I like it. So far, I haven't had any problems keeping it tuned or where it makes a bunch of noise. Every once in a while, I have my MP40 set in sync or countersync to where uh, if this is pushing 60%, this one drops down to like 30 or 40 or whatever it does, and it creates more of a wave effect. Um, and when it does, occasionally you will hear some water extra to get pushed into the overflow box and a slight little gargle sound, but it's not very loud at all. It's very hard to notice unless I'm trying to pay attention for it. Um... So yeah, that's it in a nutshell. I'm trying to think. Uh, one other thing I'll mention on the stands, and I think they all do this to the three major companies, uh, is down here, they all come, or the ProClear comes with an adjustable pad. They're all adjustable, which I think is great because when you move the stand in, the first thing you do, the stand is already built. You don't have to put it together. You just adjust the pads, make it level if you have a level. I put that on there, make sure it's level, there's no teetering. And then after that, you bring your tank in and set your tank on it. Uh, the tank itself, empty, weighs like 430 pounds. So we took four people to move it in with suction cups. We broke down the box outside, set it on the stand. Stand wasn't too bad. I still use furniture dollars just to roll it in here and to set it down. Um, no doors on this side. I think maybe Waterbox runs doors on both sides. But on the Pro Clear, you just get doors on the one side. Uh, you see my cat, six line. Stuff's still a mess from moving, and I haven't had a chance to hook up another power bar down at my ATO system and uh, for water changes as well. Uh, as far as my setup goes, as you can see, I like Echo Tech, so I'm running uh, three Radon G5 XR15s. I'll probably go to a fourth one, but right now I don't have a lot of coral. I have some SPS in there, but everything seems happy. Uh, eventually, once I start putting more SPS in or to growth, I will definitely probably bump up to a fourth light, but for right now, uh, this is what I'm running. It's still early and it's uh, coming on to daytime light, so it hasn't hit its peak yet. Uh, the other thing I was going to talk about is the ATO, and I missed it when I was down here. Uh, some people may call it an afterthought. It seems like everybody does this. I'm not a big fan of Red Seas either. I took it out. Um, this is the three gallon. It uses uh, a four inch, or excuse me, quarter inch water line. You see it back there with a the float valve. Right back there. I'm not a fan of those things. I think they're very hard to manipulate and to keep correct if you're really trying to keep your salinity uh, at the same level. I think the eye on the Tunzi, and for the money, if you're going to spend the money on this tank, excuse me, pitch in the 150 bucks and just get the damn Tunzi and buy a $50 sump and put it in there because this is only three gallons. It's not, you know, it's not made terrible or anything like that, but has a little cover, and you got to figure out a way to fill it up. I mean, I could do the same thing I'm doing now. I could run an ATO line from down my basement from my RODI system with a pump and just punch it in here, uh, somehow zip tie or keep it in place, and then just let it fill this up and just do it once a day and fill it. But it kind of defeats the purpose. Um, I like my five-gallon ATO sump that's on the other side here. And it's what I've been using for years. It, it, it does the job. That's it. Because right now, and I'm in the Denver area, we have low humidity. I'm burning about almost a gallon a day. Maybe over. I'd have to really sit down and calculate it. And I haven't had a chance to yet. Uh, but that's it. If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, overall, I think it's a good tank. 
uh, I haven't had any issues that I've seen so far that I don't like. I think for the money, you're getting more volume compared to a Red Sea or a water box. Build quality on the stand, I think they're about the same. I think there are certain things I like about the stand more. Uh, the thing I didn't like is, like I said, the plumbing. I thought they could have cleaned that up or used some brackets. But I know the other part of that is probably why they don't at ProClear is because a lot of guys that get into these tanks, they're going to cut and do a lot of their own plumbing because they're going to add in UV sterilizers and different types of uh, plumbing. So it kind of leaves it up to you if you want to do it. I know a lot of guys don't like these gate valves, they call them ball valves, because it's it's minimal adjustment. It's not like the ones you can actually rotate out, you know, 100 or 360 degrees and keep turning them. Uh, if you have any questions about my equipment, like this Max Spec, I love this skimmer. Out of the box, threw it in there, kicked it on, and it's been kicking ass since. I didn't really have to do much to tune it or do anything. I didn't have to sit there and clean it and run it through vinegar and water and all that stuff. Uh, but that's it. Uh, this side here, you can also plug that. I took the actual plug out that's in here. Uh, it's just like that one. You just pop it out. And that's the only space, though, realize that you can run your wires and electric through unless you want to start cutting and all that bullshit which I wouldn't recommend on this size tank. It comes through there. So again, you have any questions or curious about some of this stuff or ask about my setup, even though it's a complete mess, uh, how I run my tank or how I did the transition from my smaller tank to this bigger one, uh, let me know. Thanks.